Algebra 2, I have four multiply complex numbers. Okay, here's the thing that some people just can't seem to get, can't understand what's going on. Whenever we say add like terms, the reason we say that is because you just can't add anything together. They have to be alike. But you can always, always multiply. It doesn't matter if they're like terms or not. If, if it's asking you to multiply two things together, you can always do that, just depending on what you have with it. So as a reminder, let's go over this right here. Okay, if you have the square root of negative one, that means the square root of one i and the square root of 1 is 1, so that would be 1i, and 1i is just the same thing as i. So basically, if you have square root of negative 1 anywhere in life, you can turn it into just an i, okay? But if you have, so if i is the square root of negative 1, and i is the square root of negative 1, and you're multiplying them together, and you're taking the square root of two things that are being multiplied together, then you would have negative 1. That's the key thing in this lesson, okay? If you have i squared equals negative 1. i squared equals negative 1. So if you have i squared, or if you have anything bigger than an i, you're going to have to change it, and I'll get to that in just a little bit. So let's go to this first question. We have 3 times 4i. Now, if it said 3 plus 4i, you can't do that because they are not like terms. It would have just been 3 plus 4i. But if it's asking you to multiply, you can. Just do 3 times 4, and then you multiply your i's together, which there's just 1, so your answer would be 12i. No biggie, right? Okay, let's keep on going. So we have a negative 5 times negative 5i. Multiply your numbers together and multiply your i's together. In this case, we still just have 1i. So what's a negative 5 times a negative 5? A positive 25. And again, you just have 1i. On this one, we are distributing because these two negative, or, I'm sorry, these two parentheses are right next to each other. So we're going to distribute the negative 5 to both parts, or we're going to multiply the negative 5 to both parts. So what's a negative 3 times a negative 5? A positive 15. What's negative 5 times a positive 2? A negative 10, but the 2 has an i with it, so it would have been negative 2i. You cannot put the 15 and the 10 together. Let me rephrase that. You cannot add the 15 and the 10 together because they are not like terms. So this would be your answer. What's the operation it's asking for right here? To multiply. So what's 4 times 5? 20. And what's i times i? i squared. But if we remember anything within the last two minutes, I told you that we cannot leave and anything with bigger than just an I. Let me see, let me see. So, so I squared equals negative one. So let's go back here. Now watch. There is no, nothing between the 20 and the I, which means that you're multiplying the 20 and the I squared. So what is I squared? Negative 1. So what happens if you multiply negative 1 to a positive 20? You get negative 20. And that's going to be your answer. Same one thing with this one. 2i times 3i. 2 times 3 is 6i times i is i squared. What is i squared? Negative 1. So you're going to multiply negative 1 to a positive 6 and get negative 6. Okay. Positive 4 times a negative 5 is negative 20. i times i is i squared. 
So negative 20 times negative 1, that negative, what's that negative 1 going to do to the negative 20? Make it positive. We're going to distribute 2 times 4 is 8, and there's just one i, so we're going to leave that there. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, but the outside 2 has an i and the inside 2 has an i, so i times i is i squared. This part is finished because it only has one i. This part is not finished because it has a bigger i than one. So we go, so the 8i is going to stay minus 4 because it says minus 4. But what's i squared? Negative 1. And that negative 1 is going to change that negative 4. The 8i is going to stay. But the negative 1 is going to change the negative 4 to a positive 4. Now, if we were doing all of this on paper and you turned it into me like this, I wouldn't be happy about it, but I couldn't count it wrong. All right? This is a correct answer. If you put it into the computer like this, it's not going to count it wrong because it is a correct answer. But if you remember in the previous lessons, I'm trying to find some place to write, remember we locked the real number first and the imaginary number second. We prefer it that way. It's not going to count it wrong if you don't, but it would be stupendous if you could understand that the 4 should be written before the 8 because the 8 has an I with it. Both of those are the right answers. If you type them in, they should count them. I don't think IXL has changed the situation or anything, but if they do count 8I plus 4 incorrect, let me know so I can tell everybody else. Okay, on to the next one. Negative 4i squared. Okay. This 2 is on the outside of this parenthesis. That is super, super, super important. Okay. So what it's saying is you have two of these wonderful problems. We're going to put a negative 4i inside one parenthesis, and we're going to put a negative 4 on the inside of another parenthesis. Now, if you put negative 4 squared in the calculator, just like I said, negative 4 squared, you're going to get a negative 16. Negative 16 would be incorrect. The negative 4 is being squared. So, negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. And i times i is i squared. i squared is negative 1. So what's the negative 1 going to do to the positive 16? Change it to negative 16. We're going to distribute. Negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. Negative 1 times 5i is negative 5i. 3i times negative 3 is negative 9i. 3i times positive 5i is 15i squared. Okay. Change the i squared first. This is a positive 15 times negative 1, which makes it a negative 15. These are like terms because they did not have i's with them. These are like terms because they do have i's with them. So 3 minus 15 is negative 12. Negative 5 and negative 9 is negative 14. But it's going to keep the i. Distribute, distribute.
Alright, hopefully I'm going to have enough room on this. Negative 4 times negative 5. If you're multiplying a radical to another number, if because the 4 is not inside, the 4 is only going to be multiplied to the 5. The 4 is not going to be multiplied to the 7. Okay, so negative 4 times negative 5 is a positive 20. There's only one i, so it will stay. And there's only one radical, so the square root of 7 stays the square root of 7. Now we're going to go to this. I will try to go as slow as possible. The 2 is negative. The 5 is negative. We're multiplying them together. So what's a negative times a negative? Positive. The 2 is on the outside and the 5 is on the outside. So what's 2 times 5? 10. The 2 has an i. The 5 has an i. So i times i is i squared. Now both of these have radicals. It really doesn't matter because that one is a 7 and the other is a 7. It matters that they're both radicals, okay, or square roots. So we're going to put a square root right here because I'm running out of room. And we're going to multiply whatever is on the inside to whatever is on the inside. It just happens to be a 7 and a 7. So 7 times 7 is 49. This wonderful part is finished because the 7 does not break down into anything else and you only have one i. So it is pretty much done. But on the 10 part, watch this. The 3, uh, let's get this purple. Purple, and then I'm going to put all of the purple all the answers to the purple in here. So we bring the plus sign down. We bring the 10 down. The i squared has to change because we are not leaving anything with an i squared. What is i squared? Negative 1. The square root of 49, if we put the square root of 49 in the calculator, we do not get the square root of anything anymore. We get a wonderful 7 without a square root. So 10 times negative 1 times 7 is negative 70. And negative 70 does not have an i, which means that negative 70 is a real number. So we're going to put the negative 70 first, and we're going to switch the 20 i square root of 7 and put it in the back. Find the product. Product means to multiply. 1 minus i in its complex conjugate. Does anybody from I3 remember what the conjugate of 1 minus I is? Ding, ding, ding. That's correct. 1 plus I. And to multiply, we have to distribute. It is not going to be fun. It is not going to be happy. But we are going to get it done. So what's 1 times 1? One? 1. What's 1 times I? 1 I. That's correct. You guys are so smart. Now we're going to take this negative I and multiply it to both of them. Negative i times 1 is negative 1i. Negative i times positive i is negative i squared. Now we have to fix it up. So I'm going to bring that down because I have to fix this. There's my minus sign. But what is i squared? Negative 1. So if i squared is already a negative 1, but there's a negative in front of it, what happens? It becomes positive. Now we're going to put our like terms together. This is like terms and these are like terms. So 1 plus 1 is a 2 and 1i minus 1i cancels out. You may want to kind of make a little note of that since we multiplied complex conjugates and those i's canceled out. I wonder if it ever happened any more than that. I bet you it does. And so our answer is 2. Let's see if it happens again because this is the same exact problem. Different numbers. It says the product, so we're going to multiply 10 minus 7i. And what's the conjugate of 10 minus 7i? 10 plus 7i. The 10 to both. 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 7i is 70i.
negative 7i times 10, negative 70i, negative 7 times positive 7 is negative 49. Now let's see if I'm going to blow anybody's minds since we've been doing this for several problems now. It's I squared, right? Have you figured out what I squared does to the number that it's with? It just changes its sign, right? So if we know that, instead of having to write everything down, can I just mark the I squared out and change that to a plus or a positive now? Because I squared just changes the negative 49 to a positive 49. If it would have, was a negative 49 I squared, then it, um, it was a negative. If it was a positive 49 I squared, and the I squared would have changed it to a negative 49. So there you go. Oh, lo and behold, look at these I's. Isn't that amazing? Anytime you multiply a conjugate and another a number in its conjugate, those I's are always going to cancel every stinking time. So basically, you're going to end up with a real number. Okay, these are not conjugates. But I am going to have to write it down twice. Why am I going to have to write it down twice? Because of that little number right there. And so we're going to take this negative square root of 3 to both. Negative times a negative is a positive. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. Yes, it will change. It will be fixed. A negative square root of 3 times negative 5i is a positive 5i square root of 3. going to do it again. Let's do it with green. And a negative 5i times negative 3 is a positive 5i square root of 3. And a negative 5i times a negative 5i is a positive 25i squared. So let's just look at this real quick right here. What did I say a while ago? An i squared changes the sign. i squared goes away and since it's a positive 25 now, it now is a negative 20. Five. And I'm trying to remember how Axel wants this answer. Let me get some colors. Okay. Alright. Real numbers to imaginary numbers. Let me undo that real quick. Will that take that away? Of course not. Real numbers and imaginary numbers. That's a real number that I haven't fixed yet. I kind of forgot about that. And that's a real number. That's an imaginary number. And that's an imaginary number. Okay. What's the square root of 9? 3. Can I put 3 and negative 25 together? Yes, because they both don't have eyes with them. So what's 3 minus 25? Negative 22. And the, all the green have I's, and they have the square root of threes, so they are considered like terms. So what's 5 plus 5? 10. But the I and the square root of 3 stays with it. That's it.